Hi there, I'm Kathleen Jasper, and today we're working on a few math problems. I haven't done math with you guys in a long time, so I wanted to do that today. I'm gonna to show you how to solve these problems in under a minute, and that's gonna help you out on your math exam because you gotta be quick. So let's get started. Most standardized math assessments expect you to solve the problems in a minute or less. And this can be really hard for people because math is hard. Now, some math problems will take you 10 seconds, 20 seconds, and other math problems will take you a minute or two minutes. But you wanna make sure that on average, if you took all of your problems and took the average of them, you are solving them in a minute or less. That's usually the standard. That's what it is for ACT math. Now today I have four ACT math problems. I got them from the released ACT math exam and you can find that as well. I will link it up in the description below and I'm going to show you how these problems kind of look complicated but they are not and you can solve them very quickly. Now these math problems you will see on all kinds of standardized math exams. So teacher certification, exams, ACT, SAT, any kind of high school test, you'll see these kinds of math problems. So it's not just for ACT, this will be for all types of math. But I love using ACT math because they have really good math problems and it's just a lot of fun to go through these with my students. Now let's take a look at my screen. I'm going to be working these out for you. So you can see here that our first problem is a word problem. And a lot of people get freaked out when they see a word problem. And you know that I always like to work work backwards when I am looking at problems on a standardized assessment. So it's really important for me to start from the bottom and work upward. So I like to look at first the answer choices. So it looks like here I'm going to be expected to come up with an answer. I know that sounds silly. Of course, I'm going to have to come up with an answer, but sometimes you have to come up with an equation. And if you don't look at the answer choices first, you'll go through the whole entire problem trying to solve it. And that wasn't what you were supposed to do. You were supposed to write an equation. But in this case, we do have, you know, just standard numbers. So it looks like I'm gonna have to come up with a solution. And then let's take a look at this. What is the total number of servings the modified recipe will make? And then I see this, this stands out to me, proportionally proportions. So we know that we're probably going to have to set up a proportion for this particular problem. Now let's go up to the top and read. Marcus's favorite casserole recipe requires three eggs and makes six servings. Marcus will modify the recipe by using five eggs and increasing all other ingredients in the recipe proportionally. Proportion. What is the total number of serv servings the modified recipe will make? All right, so I know if I'm setting up a proportion here, I'm going to have our matchy, matchy principle. We always talk about that in Nava Ed. And so we have three eggs makes six servings. I'm gonna set these equal to each other. How many servings does five eggs make? Notice we have eggs over servings equals eggs over servings. Matchy, matchy. I don't have eggs over servings equals servings over eggs. I have the same thing on the top on both sides and the same thing on the bottom on both sides. So I have, if you wanted to do this as you read the question, you can see three eggs make six servings. How many servings X is made from five eggs? Then all I do is cross multiply and solve and I get three X equals 30, divide by X, divide by X, and I get X equals 10. C is the correct answer there. So I solved this pretty quickly, even by explaining it to you. And um, you're gonna wanna do this on the test. This is one of those easy questions you're gonna wanna get and save some of that extra time for the harder questions towards the end of the test, all right? So again, we saw the word proportion in the word problem. We know for sure we're gonna set up a proportion. We're gonna use the matchy-matchy mechanism we always use here at NavaEd, cross multiply and solve, and we got the answer fairly quickly. All right, let's go on to the next one. So again, I can see here I've got fractions. All right, not a huge fan of fractions, but it's something I got to do for this test. And it says, what is the probability that the bill drawn will be a $20 bill? So I have probability here. So that gets my mind thinking. A wallet contains five $5 bills, seven $10 bills, and eight $20 bills. The wallet's owner will reward the finder with one bill drawn randomly from the wallet. So all it's saying here is, which bill am I gonna draw randomly? And it says, what is the probability it will be a $20 bill? All right, probability means I have the whole 
on the bottom and the part on top. So let's put the whole. We have 5 plus 7 plus 8. That equals 20. So 20 is on the bottom. Now it says, what is the probability that if I pick out a bill, it's going to be a $20 bill? Well, how many $20 bills do I have in the wallet? I have eight. So it's eight out of 20. Now, I don't see eight out of 20 anywhere in my answer choices. Why? Because I have to reduce this fraction. And four can go into eight and 20 and I'll get a reduced fraction. So if I take eight and divide by four, I get two. And if I take 20 divided by four, I get five. The probability is two fifths D. Now let's take this a step further because you might get a question like this on the exam and a lot of people get confused by this. Let's say that there's a second question to this and it says, okay, now that you've drawn a $20 bill, what's the probability that you'll pull a $5 bill next? Now we have to assume that that $20 bill is going to stay out of the pile, okay, or out of the wallet. So Let's go back to this eight out of 20. My first question was, what's the probability that I pull a $20 bill out of the wallet? And in this case, it's eight out of 20 or two fifths probability. Now let's say I left that out and then I ask you, okay, now what is the probability of put it, pulling a five out of the wallet? Well, I've already pulled a $20 bill out of the wallet. And that means that this eight here becomes a seven. And the total number here becomes not 20, but 19. Because if I took that $20 out and set it to the side, now the total, my bottom number, becomes 19. And then if I'm asking you what's the probability that you'll pull a five out now, well, all you do is take the five and it would be five nineteenths would be your probability. Now I'm just taking that another step further because sometimes you will see that on the exam. It might say something like this. The owner pulls a $20 bill out, sets it aside. What's the probability that the owner will then pull a seven or a $5 bill out or a $10 bill out or whatever. So that's another way you might see probability and I just want you to be prepared for that. All right, so our next problem here is a function and people tend to totally freak out when they see this word function or they see this f of x in a problem. This is super easy. All you're doing in this problem is let the function f be defined as f of x and then it gets, gives you f of three. All you have to do is plug that three in wherever you see an X. So I'm gonna rewrite the problem with instead of the X, I'm gonna write a three. And I'm gonna be really careful that I use my PEMDAS when solving the problem, all right? So here we go, five, and then I have an X, so I'm gonna transport a three in there, squared minus seven parentheses four, and remember, that's an X, so I'm gonna make it a three plus three, close parentheses. Now be very careful, you wanna keep your PEMDAS on point here because they do this on purpose so you'll mess up your PEMDAS. So let's keep it, keep it tight here. Five times nine, cause three times three, or three squared is nine, minus seven. Now let's take care of this parentheses here. Seven times, this is gonna be four times three, is 12 plus three. Now, a lot of you might do something that most people do, and they decide, I'm gonna distribute this seven. Well, you will get the incorrect answer here. Remember your PEMDAS. Do not distribute the seven. Instead, the P in PEMDAS means parentheses. You gotta take care what's inside this parentheses first. So let's start over here. We have five times nine, that one was easy, 45, and then I have seven, and then 12 plus three is 15, okay? That is how you do it. Don't distribute that seven times 12 and then seven times three and then add them together. You would be skipping a step. You gotta do what's inside the parentheses first. Now we have 45 minus seven times 15. Now we multiply the seven through and we get 105. We get 45 minus 105 and that equals negative 60. There it is, J. 
All right, so that brings us to our last problem here, and this one has to do with slope. Now, when people see this word slope here, they tend to have panic attacks if they haven't um, been very good at this in high school, if this is the first time you're seeing it in a long time, and a, a lot of times it just sends people over the edge. Don't worry, I have a trick for you to get through this very, very quickly. Now, it says, what is the slope of a line through, and then we have the coordinates here. This is X, and this is Y, and this is X, and this is Y, okay? now. Typically what you would do here is you would use the formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. It could also be the same thing as y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. Both of them will give you the same exact answer, all right? Now, this is the one that you know is the traditional way to do this, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. But I say, you don't even have to do that. Don't even worry about that formula. What you're going to do is you're going to take these two numbers in each um, set and you're gonna stack them on top of each other and subtract them. Let me show you. I have negative two, and I'm gonna take out the comma, one, minus two, negative five. Now I'm just gonna subtract each column there. All right, now be careful with your negatives. You, typically you're gonna have negatives in situations like this and you're subtracting negatives, which gets a little bit crazy. So be very, very careful here, all right? I have negative two minus two. Negative two minus two is actually negative two plus a negative two, which gives me negative four. Be careful, the negatives can get a little crazy. Then I have one minus negative five. Not one minus five, it's one minus negative five. And in that case, that's one plus five, because one minus negative five, a negative and a negative make a positive. So in here I have six. So x is negative four and y is six. Now I'm going to be putting this rise over run. Remember, in the coordinate plane, y is the up and down, rise up and down, and run is x, that's the left and the right. So in this case, we're putting y over x. And that would be six over negative four. Well, I don't have that answer choice here. Let's reduce. If I divide them both by two, I get negative three over two, and that is D is my answer there. So be very, very careful. Notice you don't even have to worry about that crazy equation, y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. All you do is take the coordinates, stack them on top of each other, subtract them, be conscious of that negative, be careful, you're gonna be subtracting negatives and it can get a little wonky, and then do rise over run, y over x, reduce it if you can, and that gives you your slope. All right, so I hope you enjoyed those math problems today. Remember, you can do them very, very quickly. I'm actually on TikTok doing one minute math. So if you're interested in doing some speed math, check us out at TikTok. It's at Kathleen underscore Jasper on TikTok. We're gonna try it out and see what happens. I don't know if people are going to wanna watch TikTok and do math problems, but I decided to give it a try. So if you enjoy math and you wanna do some speedy math, check us out on TikTok at Kathleen underscore Jasper. Don't forget that we go live every every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouTube and on Facebook, and we do about an hour of math problems every Tuesday. So if you like to go and work along with us, Tuesday nights are great for you. And if you can't watch live, you can always catch the replay on YouTube or on our Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy this channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and hit the notifications button so you're notified when we upload new content. Thank you so much for watching and have an awesome day.